in terms of like emotional, like this was one of those that really grips you in the heart to realize like, this is why he's broken. And man, like we can all relate to something bad that's happened in our past. And sometimes we don't want to remember it. And so we do things to forget the bad. Greetings, travelers. Greetings, travelers. And welcome once again to Travelers Into the Multiverse. I am one of your variant hosts, Christian Franklin. Is that who I think it is? Oh, dude, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what just happened. Um, I'm Tucker Wallace, and whoa, 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 whoa. was it was that what Ducker? Ducker. My name is Tucker Christian. I think you've been watching too much of episode five. I mean, dude, there's I, a lot to I, a lot I, to unpack. I know, man. I guess I was kind of hallucinating there for a second, like Mark in the insane asylum. But uh, I thought I saw it. Uh, a duck variant of you for a minute, but maybe I didn't. So I have no idea. I have no idea what you're talking about. No, oh, <laughs> but you've got me going just like episode five of Moon Knight now yeah. streaming on Disney plus man. I, like I, like we've talked about every spoiler discussion or breakdown, each episode keeps getting better and better, man. It's oh, yeah. just awesome. I I'm, I'm loving the show. I know you are. We've talked about it before. And I mean, I mean, people can say what they want to say, but we're impressed. And you know, what's interesting too, is like somebody said this right off the bat, this episode is not necessarily action packed Mm -hmm. per se. It's not just, you know, superhero action, but I think it's the best episode so far until hopefully a great season finale. But man, um, I don't know, Tucker, what are some of your initial thoughts before we dive in? You know, we get to learn more about Hungry Hippo, you know, mm. the big cliffhanger that were left. And then we really dive into an emotional uh, unveiling of why Mark and Steven, the big question of like the mental illness that they go through. And it finally reveals um, what he why why they are. And yeah. that was, man, it's heartbreaking because so many people I'm sure out there have gone through some of that like that. And, and we feel for you. Yeah. In, in, and learning, you know, the, the truth of the identity, mm. uh, the truth of Mark and Steven, man, that is just a, uh, boy, that was heart wrenching. And we're definitely going to get more into depth with that later on. Wow. I, I think just, yeah, I, I'm with you. It's just it, the dynamic, everything we're learning um, is, is starting to come to fold, um, learning some truths about some questions we had, some answers to questions we had um, kind of going into the show. And then, you know, throughout the other episodes, you know, some people are raising questions and now some of them or a lot of them are being answered. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, so I know we're going to be going over some spoilers with some Easter eggs that were kind of neat, but really the, you know, a lot of the, the meat of this episode is just the heart. Um, man. And, and, oh and dude. Yeah. I can't, I can't, I mean, yeah. Not only like the, the physical heart that mm-hmm. <laughs> the crazy hippo mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. kind of whatever, I forgot what she was. Uh, ta- 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 red, ta- 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 yeah. I always mispronounce it. So, but she like literally pulled out both of their hearts. And, but you mm. said it best, man. Like it literally is about like the heart of these characters. And even I saw a comment as we were pulling up, you know, we mentioned this before, we're going to use a website so they, it, it, we can speed through this and kind of like, and so we want to give credit to, to the website mm-hmm. that, you know, this is, this is their original source, but like someone made a comment on another site that it's kind of like Mark, is being a bigger brother to Steven trying to shield him from the traumatic experience he went through because of his mom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, th- and that was just, that was, wow. It was hard to watch. Um, yeah. And it, it, it's definitely going to be hard for those, uh, you know, and, and not to kind of generalize it yeah. sort of speak, but for maybe those who've lost a sibling, you know, or, through a tragic event or through uh, maybe a medical condition, we know we really feel for you and um, you know, our hearts go out to you. 
uh, but yeah, I mean this, but that's one thing I'm, I'm really liking about uh, Moon Knight uh, specifically within the MCU is that we're seeing these things kind of be represented. Yeah. Uh, true trad. And we're talking about like, you know, tragic uh, life events, relatable things that people go through. Mm-hmm. That's just something that uh, is, is such a strong point. And I think the director, the screenplay, the, the writing, uh, everything behind it is just great. But yeah, I, I mean, just jumping right into it, Tucker, um, you know, we had mentioned in our last spoiler discussion or maybe a couple ago, I couldn't remember, but um, the insane asylum, we see mm-hmm. more of that this time. Uh, we see the kind of the therapy session that, Mark is having with uh, Dr. Harrow, so to speak. And of course, he's trying to pass himself off. Dr. Harrow is trying to pass himself off as a psychiatrist, you know, a, a licensed therapist or, you know, whatever. I can't remember exactly what he calls himself, but he tries to validate that, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, say, hey, 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 look, look, like, OK. Even Mark says, you're not you're not who you say you are. And he's like, OK, all right, I'm not I'm not. And so it's just an interesting back and forth. And then finally, uh, what is it? He injects him with uh, Do- Dr. Yeah. Harrow, injects him, uh, injects Mark with a, um, what Some is it? Kind of like, like a- knockout serum or something. Yeah, it? something like that. And so, <laughs> so then, because the, the beginning of the episode is Mark talking with uh, Dr. Harrow. Uh, and then once Mark gets injected with this serum, then it takes us back to the cliffhanger of episode four. Hungry, hungry hippo, and uh, mm. <laughs> we see uh, we see uh, Mark and Stephen screaming like little girls when they see. Of course, the whole thing that the internet's been going crazy over uh, the hip hippo goddess uh, Ta Ret. I think yeah, I always get that. Make sure I'm saying it right. Ta Ret. I think that's yeah. how they pronounce it. Ta Ret, but uh, T. Yeah, I will call it T. Um, but yeah, no, she's a, she's a friendly hippo. Uh, she reveals herself, uh, or Stephen recognizes her as the goddess of women and children mm. and uh, the Egyptian goddess of women and children that we kind of talked about a little bit. And so it's, it's kind of neat to kind of see, you know, the continuation of this cliffhanger from episode four. Um, so within the insane asylum where they're still at, that actually is, um, that was a reference, but uh, Dr. Harrow, I'm kind of go kind of backtracking here a little bit, but Dr. Hero does talk about uh, that. It's the Putnam medical facility in Chicago. Mm. Uh, this was actually in a reference to the, uh, f- uh, the medical facility that was in, that was very prominent in the Moon Knight comics in 2016. Yeah. So that's kind of cool uh, because obviously Marvel's trying to draw more from the, recent comics even with a lot of their new uh properties coming up um they try to draw more from like the most recent within the past decade of source material so that's kind of cool um but then uh, we see uh then we kind of see i, I want to tucker you can talk about this one we were talking about a little bit ago but um taller red's kind of giving an explanation of what's going on in the afterlife yeah. kind of comedic you know <laughs> But she talks about the the ancestral plane. So what is that, per se? It's like another version of the afterlife. You know, we actually see this in Black Panther where, yep. um, you know, he's talk. He's able to talk to uh, T'Challa, is able to talk to his dad again. And um, you quoted it earlier, like off camera. It's like, I'm not ready to be without <laughs> you. Right. But it kind of makes me wonder. So do you, so you got the afterlife, the ancestral plane. Um, Is that like, is, is, is that only in his dream because he's knocked out or Mm. like, is he legit knocked out? And, oh, hang on, let's see. Is he legit? Is he only seeing that because he's been injected and he really is in Chicago? Cause it's like, where does the moon night stuff fit into all this? Like yeah. where where does I want to figure out that? So it's like where does real time add up with this like a sane asylum he's in? So I'm I'm curious about that. But yeah, the ancestral plane, another version of the afterlife, and you know, this, learning this background, uh, it's 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 something really cool. Like you know, we've growing up, you learn about 
ancient history and mm-hmm. um, architects and archaeology and all that stuff. But like, it it's just neat seeing and, and and it's just neat seeing this. And you know, I don't know. We can we can save a lot more for later. But I'm I love it. It's been really cool. Uh, it leads us to like when they're on that boat traveling, I guess, to judgment. They're about to be judged with the yeah. scales and mm-hmm. that goes back to the heart. It's the, it says, uh, mm-hmm. I think Tarette, the hearts aren't full and trust me, I'm a goblet half full kind of gal, but <laughs> it's like they each feel incomplete, which kind of made me yeah. think of uh, purgatory. Like, yeah, like you, you still have something left to do. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know how Moon Knight's going to come back. I don't know. I don't know how yeah. Mark's going to come back. Well, and one thing we had talked about is how Ta Rett was probably going to be a very pivotal part in helping them at least try to get back to Conchu or even talk mm. to Osiris to let Conchu, to release Conchu so Conchu can give the power of Moon Knight back. But yeah, yeah. you know, kind, kind of talking all the things, it's really interesting what Marvel's doing here, you know, opening up this ancestral plane. Um, I was watching something you know, related to Thor Love and Thunder today. Um but I can't wait for that movie, by the way. We're good. We're definitely yeah. doing some content for that, Tucker. Oh, so we definitely will. Better definitely buckle will. up, y'all. It's going to be <laughs> a sweet child of mine, Guns and Roses. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, it's so anyway, but but I like what they said because this is, they, they did tie in Moon Knight with it too. They're talking about the Olympian gods, the Greek gods being uh, shown in Thor, Love and Thunder. You have the Egyptian yeah. gods here in Moon Knight. Um, you would have a connection with the ancestral plane, like Tucker, you mentioned in Black Panther. So you're, we're seeing all this connection uh, with all these different Marvel, these MCU properties. I think that's really cool. I think mm-hmm. it's really neat. It's, it's not, it's, it's a continuation, but also Moon Knight has felt very, you know, uh, central. It's felt very, I uh, shouldn't say secluded from the MCU, but it's also felt like its own property. Yeah. It's not just focused on Avengers, 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 or mm-hmm. even the snap, you know, how the snap, with all the other uh, Marvel uh, M- MCU TV shows, it kind of always had an effect on what's going on. But yeah. this one, uh, not that that's a bad thing. I think it's great. There's connection. This kind of stands one, on its own. It doesn't have yeah. to be like a crutch or anything. Yeah, exactly. So um, I'm loving that. You're talking about the ship that they're on, uh, the mm-hmm. scale. They've got their hearts. Um, yeah, she literally takes their hearts out of them, <laughs> uh, out of both of them. But they're like... Um, but it's not graphic or anything. It's like, no. uh, what, what's it made of? I'm, I'm looking at a picture of it. I don't but, even know. It looks kind of like a clear skull or something. What, like um, I know we're on the same place, but what would you call that feather? I wondered what the feather symbolized. Yeah, that was uh, that's a good point. So uh, I personally don't know anything. I know that like uh, sometimes you've probably heard like maybe like scientific research or something like people sometimes they'll, they'll like weigh a a bag of stones against Mm -hmm. a bag of feathers or something. So I don't know if that has any, that probably has nothing to do with it. I just, I just know that uh, using feather as a Hmm. method or a measurement of weight, Hmm. that's pretty prominent, I think, but that was, that's a good question. I didn't really think about that. Like where'd the feather come from? I wonder, um, actually, I, I'm not going to pretend like I know it. <laughs> the, uh, the, the reference I pretend here. most of the time. So it's okay. Yeah. I'm definitely gonna be like, Oh yeah, I know it now. It's, uh, it says the, <laughs> um, let's say, uh, the feather symbolized and they call it M a apostrophe a T mot or mate, mot, mot yeah. but it's a uh, symbolizing harmony. Um, mm, and this, okay white feather of truth was used to balance on the golden scale alongside one heart. And this determined if a f- person could make it to the field of reeds or paradise, mm. which um, is funny. You know, scripture talks about paradise. Luke 23, 43. Yeah. Thou yeah. shall be with me in paradise. Jesus to the thief on the cross. I thought that was a cool little, I know they're probably not definitely not referencing that. Right. But it just was like, right. Hey, okay. Yeah. No, I thought that's great. That's what really what we think about is new Testament Christians, right? Paradise. Yeah. We think about, you know, because there is a difference, paradise and heaven, right? A lot of people think, oh, paradise, Luke 23, 43, the, uh, the thief is going, Jesus told the thief he's going straight to heaven. That's, you know, misconstrued, which we're not, we're not <laughs> focusing on that. But, there, yeah, yeah, paradise is mentioned uh, in Scripture, uh, Luke chapter 16, right? That's another example, um, the rich man and Lazarus. So, 
Abraham's bosom, right? So, yeah. uh, so that there's a lot of great, you know, I think good kind of we we'll say connections, but it's kind of like it gets us thinking about scripture, right? So that's that's a great uh, idea uh, that you got going there. Um, by the way, there was I I thought this is really neat. I th- I told Tucker this before. But yeah, if you uh, pause, <laughs> this is completely sidelining right now. But if you if you pause the episode, um, mm. it's it's when uh, Stephen's trying to go into that memory of Mark. He's yeah. standing by a car, and we find out that memory later on the episode. But when he's staring out the window, um, if you pause it, there's a QR code uh, to the side. Uh, if y'all know what a QR code is, basically it's like a like a code you can scan with your phone. And it'll take it. it it'll it has a link. It'll mm-hmm. take you somewhere. So what's interesting is you can actually scan that QR code with your phone and it takes you somewhere. Where does it take you, Tucker? It takes you, which before I say it, I love how it says floor map, like in the <laughs> in the universe. But like it, it will yeah. take you to Moon Knight issue number one from 1980. So it's a free Ooh. copy that uh, Marvel Studios has given to us, which is pretty sweet. Y'all got homework. All right. Homework. Got homework. That, yeah. Speaking to us too. Speaking to us too. <laughs> yeah, speaking to us too. Yeah, we should know this stuff. <laughs> we we got to get our homework going. But um, no, it's great. But yeah, Tucker, what else we got? I know we got tons of man. I mean, um, let's see. Pushing forward, let's see. You know, Stephen. They're going back to uh, Mark and Stephen um, as they're traveling back. You know, we figure out what's really going to lead into really the the emotional heartbreak it's but one quick note is like when you go when we see these kids when they're kids you know you got uh mark and his younger brother and his younger brother it says is he's drawing the fish no hmm. actually no that's young now that says young mark but that's not young mark right there is it that um, looks like no that's that's the that's the younger brother yeah so so ever whoever did that one but um but no yeah we see the younger brother drawing a fish with one small fin or one mm. fin and so you know it's reference to nemo i mean yeah. from episode one but or gus not, which is steven's not, fish not nemo from what say the scripture we're talking about uh, <laughs> <laughs> we see you nemo yeah um but man leading into the story really that is the big question of all this which i do have one question for you christian uh, after but it's like you know we we figure out that the reason why Mark and Stephen exist, or at least Stephen, is like Mark is the original. He he is the owner of the body. He's he's Mark, right. and he creates Stephen Grant from a poster that what is it like? Nobody's stronger or have no fear. St- Doctor Stephen Grant yep. is here, yep. and so like, man, like what a one of the bigger superheroes now in the MCU is dealt with a traumatic experience at home from a loss of his brother, which turns his mom into alcoholism and then child abuse. And, you know, you could do physical and verbal abuse to a child to her own child, which he to escape that he, he sees that nostalgic poster that he watches growing up. Like it'd be like us watching Indiana Jones Mm -hmm. and, he he some i guess i don't know how that all works but that men, mental breakdown i don't know you know i don't know how all that works but it he formed another personality and yeah. called it Stephen Grant so whenever he became Stephen Grant during when he went to face hard times Stephen Grant would take over so Mark wouldn't have to go through that or no wait well, yeah, true. I mean, technically, Stephen right. Grant still went through. Stephen went through that beating, but it was a way of Mark pushing Stephen. Mark trying to get at to save Stephen from seeing the bad, which is interesting because it's his own self. So he's trying to protect his mind from his childhood on to adulthood. Whenever he tries to face hard times, it's like he turned into Stephen Grant because he believes if I be like Stephen, I could do anything. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. It's like if I could be like him, Doctor Stephen Grant on that poster, you know, um, it's like I can I can get through anything. Which that explains like him and Layla. It explains so much of why he went AWOL. Like we're gonna find out. Like with you know when he's in the military or 
or a mercenary, whatever, whatever yeah. he was doing. It's like, he, they explained so much, but, um, man, what do you got to think about that? Yeah. On the, on, so, uh, the younger brother that drowns in the episode, unfortunately, you know, through the tragic event is named Randall. This is Randall, interesting okay. because, so I'm reading here that Randall in the comics actually does not die. However, he becomes Whoa. an adversary of Mark. He becomes the shadow knight. So this is Mark's younger brother, Randall Spectre becomes shadow knight. And then of course, Mark becomes Conchu's avatar moon knight. So then wow. they have, <laughs> they go at it quite a few times in the comics. So this begs the question, we interrupt this travel for an important announcement. We hope you are enjoying your flight as we adventure into the multiverse. We want to take a moment to say thank you for joining us and to share that if you too would like to become a traveler, we are officially on Patreon. It's an easy way to not only support this platform, but also receive special rewards from us, such as a personal shout out, a private group discussing the latest movies, and even a special edition poster. With the biggest gratitude, we can't thank you enough for all of the kindness and support each of you has shown us already as we continue to create weekly podcasts, videos, and shirts about superheroes and our faith. Now, let's get back to our interdimensional travel. I wonder if we'll ever see Randall again. I don't know. Hmm. Um, that is a I, great I mean, question. You know, it's assumed that Randall, as a child, is he drowned and he's gone. Yeah, what we never if, see it. We, we, I, that's true. That's true. We never actually see it. And remember the rule of the rule of comic book, you know, we've talked about this, uh, you know, behind the scenes, but if we don't actually see a character physically die or physically get shot, you know, all these things it is assumed somehow they survived, you know, yeah. it's yeah. assumed now Randall Man. could be gone forever, but we don't know. We don't know for sure. So I'm going to, I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah. Um, we, who ne we never know. We never know. Um, but I love what you said about, um, you know, how Stephen, the Stephen Grant persona, it uh, takes over when, you know, it, it's Mark's way of coping. Mm -hmm. It's Mark's way of getting through the hardships in life, which also when Mark meets Layla, it's implied that Layla is the only good thing in Mark's life. So he doesn't turn back into Stephen or yeah. originally, right, when he first met Layla, he was just Mark. But everything else, uh, Stevens had the kind of the, uh, even Mark says it too. He said, look, mm. I, I let you live through the good events in your life. I didn't want you to have to go through what I went through. I didn't want you to have to see any of that. Um, yeah. Think about, you know, we've, we've had discussions before about, uh, go, you know, trials and tribulations, James chapter one, verses two through four. Um, we've done, we've done some podcasts on it. We've, we've collaborated with people on this topic, uh, at the core central of like trials and tribulations and experiences, um, at, at Stephen, how Steven's life, his persona has really never had to go through much, you know, it, it's almost like he's sheltered, right? Yeah. It's like, he's never had to deal with any of that. Mark, Mark has. And so, uh, like, I, like we've talked about before, you know, uh, what builds us and makes us stronger. And I think with, there's a lot of character development with Steven, even in this show, just because he starts to go through the hardships and starts to go through the yeah. trials. And just like us as Christians, there, there's no way we're going to be able to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 2 Peter 3.18. There's no way for us to do that. If we're not having to go through trials and tribulations, I'm not saying we're trying to promote it. We're not trying to promote the bad, but Tucker, you and I have had many conversations where, you know, experiences or hardships or anything mm -hmm. like that has helped shape us and, and, and mold us into stronger, hopefully stronger uh, Christians, stronger yeah. disciples. And not that we're there. I've got a long way to go, oh, but same it's, here. But, but see, that, that's part of character development, you know, and uh, sometimes we're not even the same person that we were two years ago. I mean, you just you talk with people and it's just, you know, you talk with Christians and they're the experiences we go through. So I love how you brought that up about the, the, the persona and 
how Mark goes through the hardship. Stephen gets to enjoy this the the regular things of life without having to be exposed. But then this show now he's having to <laughs> Stephen's having to live in reality. You know, it's like hey, this stuff happened. So, oh yeah, I mean, and you know, I don't know where in his relation with Mark and Layla's relationship when he became you know you know let Stephen out and. Mm-hmm. But maybe maybe it was when they were facing hard times, like in you know about the divorce, or maybe it was about you know after like coming back and and that that horrible event he went to with Layla's dad, and his, yeah, and her, you know he ended up they, uh, his name is uh, Doctor L Fowley, yeah, but he ended up getting killed, and maybe that's you know he's struggling with his relationship with Layla because he knows what happened, but he doesn't want to say, and so maybe that's when we've talked about this. That's probably when Steven somewhere in there came out whenever they were going through that separation or that divorce, you know, they didn't go through with it. And then he goes and finds another apartment lives there, starts at the museum and, you know, just, but, you know, we see the trans, we actually see the origin of moon Knight, where Conchu, you know, he, he sees him and he's like, Hey, like, do you want to be in my hands, my eyes, my vengeance to my final word against the evil doers? And, He's like, do you want death or do you want life? He's like, I don't know. And it's like, um, you know, Stephen did say, like, Mark, he took advantage of you. And in a sense, Conchu did, because Conchu's like, hey, your mind, I feel it fractured, broken, most fascinating. You're a worthy candidate to serve me during this time. Um, yeah, I mean, that was that was crazy to see that. Um, I, I'm so curious to see how they're gonna come back, how he how Mark. Now this oh this was gonna how Mark should come back, but if Jake Lockley is true, the third personality, then I wonder how that's gonna play in. What is Jake Lockley? Like, yeah, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's like, where does he fit in? Why does he come out? Because we know Stephen comes out to protect Mark, or you know, or or also Mark trying to def- to hide Stephen from the bad stuff. So I'm I'm definitely curious about that um i'm trying to say uh etsy and one other easter egg it says in mark's room you can quickly spot you know there's toys of, from tomb buster so you see you see dr stephen grant and it's mm. and the other guy um that, that we saw in episode four you know one thing i want to say uh, about um the because they're on the, sh- you know, they're both on the ship with Tal Red, and they're trying to go back to mm. uh, the land of the living, right? And then try to get, they're trying to get back to Conchu so they can get, that they can release him from, you know, captivity, from imprisonment, for tampering with the, you know, sky and all that back in episode three. Um, what's interesting? So I was reading here. This, this is a, this is a really good point. This is interesting. So mentions. This Tal Ta Rett mentions that the only way that they can get back to Conchu is through Osiris. Osiris was in Egyptian mythology, the god of the dead, resurrection, and life, and also the ruler of the dead in the underworld. Well, hmm. now that we're you know, going back to the idea of uh, multiple um, you know, uh, polytheism, right? The belief in hmm. multiple gods. Now we're having this uh, kind of this connection with uh the olympians right if we know zeus is the 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 god of the the skies and thunder and then we have hades who's the god of the underworld well now in egyptian mythology we have uh osiris the god of the underworld i'm like it's gonna get crazy (laughs) here like with all these different you know um culturally diverse uh mythologies it's just really oh yeah so um, and too, it's like why if he's the god of dead resurrection and life, I mean, couldn't he resurrect him? I yeah. mean, mm-hmm. I didn't really catch that. I mean, I was just thinking that's where they're going to die, like forever, uh, in a like we would say like hell or torment. I guess torment would be leading up to hell, but yeah. in a biblical sense. But you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, no, absolutely. But yeah, no, I I love all the Easter eggs. It's kind of neat. Yeah, like it's like showing there's a Chicago Bulls poster. Yeah. Or maybe it's it looks uh yeah, poster, something 
bark had on the walls when uh, in his childhood and the Jeff Lemire Lemur's run of Moon Knight in 2016. Then we mm-hmm. see. Oh, wow. I didn't know this, but the, the fish. I'm sure you're saying this, but the fish that Mar- uh, his young brother drew, Mark had it up in his room as well as uh, there's a Star Wars poster. There you go. Oh, that is funny that, you know, Oscar Isaac, you know, he does play in Star Wars. Yeah. Um, I was looking at that. So that that's pretty funny. It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, he plays. Uh, so if, for all, I'm sure many of you have probably seen Star Wars, The Force Awakens. It's the new trilogy. So Star Wars, Force Awakens. Star Wars, The Last Jedi, and then Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, we may have to do some material over that sometime. You know, we are yeah. expanding the universe. So definitely when we get more into the Star Wars universe and you know, that kind of thing. However, those were recepted. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I won't go further than that. But yeah, Oscar Isaac played Poe Dameron um, for the Resistance. And so uh, it was kind of neat that he's kind of, you know, like Tucker said, he's in the Star Wars movies. Uh, but also now he's in Marvel. He was also, uh, I think we had mentioned this before, he played Apocalypse, an X-Men Apocalypse. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, so he's, he's, he's familiar with the action, you know, superhero action flicks. So, um, but anyway, he's, he's just a talented actor. So it's, it's just really cool. Um, but yeah, uh, I was thinking <laughs> it was a funny joke. <laughs> I picked up on this. <laughs> it was when, uh, I was reading here uh, when Stephen comes face to face with Dr. Harrow. So Mark, right, is having this therapy session at the beginning with Dr. Harrow. And then we see all the, the all the events we've been talking about have transpired. And then it goes to Stephen meeting with Dr. Harrow. I know you're probably reading it, too, but he <laughs> makes a reference. Stephen makes a reference to Dr. Harrow looking like Ned Flanders. <laughs> like, so true it's from the from the simpsons uh and so i was like <laughs> this is so true um yeah i was like i'm like it kind of looks like ned flanders not gonna lie um but yeah it's just uh so this is where we get really wow it's so it's kind of eye-opening too because we learn so their hearts both mark and steven's hearts are on this scale with this feather well mm-hmm. the scale's unbalanced it needs to be balanced. And Tal Rett says, look, you need to go through, you basically need to be open with each other about yeah. what oh, has yeah. gone on in life. You know, so we kind of, I don't, we kind of talked about that or not, but we can kind of, you know, kind of go through it a lot. There's a lot of memories that Mark did not share with Stephen that Stephen does not know about. And specifically, right, his, his mercenary days when uh, mm-hmm. Mark was excommunicated from the military, he said, hey, there's no work for an ex military guy like me so i went on with this one guy that i knew he had me he had some contracts for me so i went out and killed i i didn't really want to do it i just did it i got it i had to survive um so then they go into you know so they start so steven starts unlocking all these memories of mark and learning about mark and who he really is and there's even a room it's really sad uh, and i won't get too into much the detail about it but there's a room full of people they're sitting at these tables and uh, they're kind of like zombies. They kind of look like zombies a little bit. You know, they're just, you know, they look, they look dead, but they're sitting upright at these tables. Yeah. And Steven says, Mark, are, are these the people that you killed? Because Mark goes around and says, I remember this person. I remember this person. And Mark says, you know, as a mercenary, he's like, yeah, you know, it, it's not, <laughs> it's not easy to go kill you. You remember, I, I remember these individuals. And it's sad because, you know, we can see it's not that's one thing I picked up even just watching it initially. I was like, Mark's not even though he did, you know, he did have a hand in ending these people's lives. You know, we do see remorse. We do see a side of him that says, man, I really wish I didn't do this. But he thought at the time he had no choice. Um, I mean, even from the beginning when he's up against when he's in front of all the gods in the pyramid and they're yeah. like, is that true? Are you unwell? And he's like, I'm, you know, however they ask him, but he's like, yeah, I am unwell. I, and it's like all this time he's been dealing with the, the trauma and the, and the horrible abuse that he suffered as a kid and just learning how to deal with that in his own way. Yeah. And, and one thing I think about uh, with us as Christians, 
you know, when we fall into sin, right? We, for, you know, for the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23, and we've all fallen short, Romans 3, 23. We've all fallen short. Um, we think back to the things that we've done. Um, remember Spider-Man 3, Tucker, yeah. you know, at the end, you know, Tobey Maguire, um, Sandman, right? At the end of the movie, he's asking for forgiveness, and Tobey Maguire stand there saying, like, you know, at first he's <laughs> he's having to realize, you know, I've done terrible things too. Like, you know, I need to forgive Sam. Obviously, forgiveness, Matthew 6, 14 and 15. But it's, it's just interesting. Like, let's take us, let's put us in uh, Mark's shoes. Don't we have remorse for things we've done before? We, oh, yeah. I'm not saying I haven't killed anyone, <laughs> you know, fortunately. Uh, may, no. Tucker may find that out later, but uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, but, We've all done things in our past that we're not proud of. Yeah. We've all done things uh, for those of us, you know, as Christians before we obeyed the gospel and baptism that we, we did things that we're not proud of. We have, we did things that we look back and say, man, I just, I wish I'd never done that. And yeah. I think about those things quite often. Uh, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. Right. And I know, uh, same, we'll, same. we don't try to dwell on it and our lives are ruined by them. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, I, I should treat that person better. I should have been more respectful of a person or I shouldn't have been thinking this thought or I shouldn't have done this action. I shouldn't have retaliated that way. You know, we all have different thoughts that go in our head. Uh, but, you know, as Christians, so, so it's, it's, it's nice seeing some remorse to the character. We know that he's not just a cold blooded killer. We know that he actually does have a heart. He he remembers each person. He because mercenaries that you know, if you watch television, you watch um, shows. If there's a if there's a hired mercenary, they have to learn their target. They have to know this target. They have to know their schedule. They have to know everything about them, their families, everything. So you know that had to be hard on Mark, going through all going through this room full of people that mm -hmm. he had killed. Oh man, and have yeah. So we do, we don't want to make light of, you know, killing, but it's it's something that makes us really think about, you know, the things that we've done. Have we really thought about maybe people we've affected? It's it's kind of it's kind of kind of touching in a way. Yeah. Oh yeah, <clears throat> I was watching some video earlier, and in the comment section, it was talking. It was a superhero video, but it was like you know one of the things that really I guess sticks out, and why we love all this so much. And it was just like, it's because of when a, when a character understands conviction and, it, and it, the comment actually said, like, not even, it doesn't take even a religious person to understand like conviction. Mm -hmm. And it's like a, you know, when we, when we put Christianity aside, the human race, like human, you know, being a person, which you can't separate the two, like being a christian and, and you know being a god's creation and being a human but anyway it's like all humans can understand hurt and pain and conviction and when you do wrong and right and i think that's why we love we can connect with so much some of these characters specifically superhero characters is not only do we understand and relate to them but they also teach us to try to do better and you know in this episode we realize like even though it's you know it kind of seems like two different people it's really like Mark dealing with this in his mind, but he comes to terms with himself and f I guess fully realizes everything he's done and he accept he accepts his responsibility of the sins that he did in a sense. Um, I mean, even to the point where like Steven actually tries to go when they're fighting on the ship and Steven goes to try to, he's like, you know, oh, wait a minute. Like if, if, I'm you and then like, you know, like, you know, like I, I can fight too, in a sense, like, and yeah. so he yeah. ends it up like, I don't know if he really meant to fall off the boat, but <laughs> you know, he, he ends up sacrificing in a sense, his life. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. If, sorry. If you haven't yeah. watched that, but yeah. it's, uh, which in my head, I'm like, well, if Steven fell off the boat, then, I mean, it's still, he's still there. I mean, it's just like, cause Mark's still alive and if Mark's still alive and Steven's still alive. Yeah. But I mean, in a, in, in a narrative film sense, like it is pretty sad. And then, you know, we end on it with 
the scales being balanced and Mark wakes up in the field and it's a beautiful scenery. It was actually, I was actually thinking how they shot that possibly with a green screen, like fake, like wheat, wheat and all that stuff, wheat fields. Um, I don't know. I'm so curious to see. Oh, wait. Oh, it's, that was the fields of, okay. So there's another picture down below. It's callbacks episode one. And one of the people's asking Steven, and it's like, you know, did it, did it suck for you mm. getting rejected from the field of reeds? Yeah. And then it's like, well, that, and then Steve was like, well, that, uh, that don't make sense. Cause I'm not dead. Am I? And then, so, wow. It's like, we're, we're seeing him. He's made it to the field of reeds. And I don't know if Osiris will be there. I don't know. But if he is the God of, in, in, in the sense of Egyptian mythology, if he is the God of dead resurrection and what was the other one? Life, Life. resurrection. Yeah. And so, Maybe he's going to be the one to resurrect Mark. I don't know. Or Steven. Yeah. Or Steven. Yeah. Or, yeah. It's, uh, do you yeah, think that it, is that Steven that popped up in? Well, I guess I'm, I mean, they're the same person, but is that Steven that, that popped up in the field of reeds? Oh, um, or do you think it's Mark? Well, the, the colors, like the colors they're wearing. So it's assumed Mark. Because he's wearing, you know, he's wearing white, and Stephen's wearing, oh uh, yeah, sure, the darker color. So I would assume it's Mark because mm-hmm. he made it to the field of reeds. But I would not be surprised if, you know, it's it's in, in good Marvel fashion if Stephen right is resurrected somehow. Um, but that 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 was a, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a definitely a sacrificial moment, a heroic yeah. moment for Stephen. Um, and so, yeah, but it's like they're the same person, you know, yeah. they're not two different people. So <laughs> yeah, it's like it's I like mean. that's what I was thinking about. I was like, well, I mean, he's not. I mean, I, I guess Stephen's gone, but really, he's not because you know, it's just whatever this persona. state that he's in. It's like maybe he's gone, like you know, in the moment. But I mean, it's like, yeah. Well, you know, and it could be one thing too where. um it's like in a movie where like there's character development. So maybe one part of them, it, you know, he doesn't, mm. the Steven part does not need to be there anymore. I don't know. Like, and he just, he's just Mark. And, you know, uh-huh. I, I, I don't know. That's just, that's just a theory. I could be completely wrong. We could be seeing, seeing the lovable Steven back in episode six. I don't know. Or the end of episode six, but maybe that's a part of him that was needed to get through the hard times. But now since there's been so much development and learning who he actually is, um, I don't know. I mean, that that's something that's going to be great to analyze for episode six, which is going to be the final episode of this epic oh, series. Yeah. So. Dude. Um, someone pointed out on Instagram, it was like every in credits, you see a crescent moon and the moon's mm. getting bigger and bigger to a full moon. And so yeah. episode six will be the full moon. So we know moon night's coming back. We don't know how. And, but we know like, like we've been saying, like, you know, this we've, there's probably a lot of people like, man, I've wanted to see a ton of moon night, but like you can't have moon night without the person. Right. And so right. we had to learn about all of this because if there's a season two, which I don't know if there will be, because this is more of a special event. I don't know. Like yeah. we'll probably see way more moon night, but now, or Mr. Night. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I can't wait. This has been, this was definitely like, in terms of like emotional, like this was one of those that really grips you in the heart to realize like, this is why he's broken. And man, like we can all relate to something bad that's happened in our past. And sometimes we don't want to remember it. And so we do things to forget the bad. Yeah. And that's all he's done his whole life is there was a mistake that was made. I mean, it's not like he killed his brother. It was just, it was a bad decision. There were kids and Steven, I think Steven was the one that tried to tell Mark, like you're a kid, like you're innocent. Like you don't know it was a mistake. And one thing too, like that, uh, I guess my final thoughts is like, even, even the older Mark, when the dad was there and he's like, dad, you should have dealt with this already. Like, it's not on me. Like it's never the responsibility of a kid. At least it's not supposed to be to raise the adult. Yeah. Like, like that's, 
you know, as, as Christians, like we're, you know, I'm, I'm a new dad in the last couple of years. And like, it's my responsibility to take care of my little boy, not to, not for my boy to take care of me. Like, you know, whether that be emotional or financially or physically, it's like, I'm supposed to take care of my little son and not like be like, Hey, and, or it shouldn't be reversed. And I don't know, that stuck out to me when I saw that, but I can't wait. I'm excited for episode six. It's going to be, it's going to be epic. Dude, I, I'm with you. And what I love about, uh, yeah, the, the one aspect I kind of want to capitalize on what you said, um, and then we'll, you know, we'll wrap up because we go on for hours about this. But, man, I just – I love the idea that it kind of represents – because I, I think there have been times in our life maybe we act different. Yeah. Um, it, what I mean by that is – Maybe you've gone, and I'm, we're talking to the viewers and listeners here, you know, maybe you've gone through an event in your life and maybe it's changed who you are inside, but you want, you don't really want to portray that to people. So you act a little bit different. You act maybe more positive or upbeat, mm-hmm. but inside you're, you're hurting inside yeah. you're and vice versa. Maybe you're kind of a more introverted person to people, but there's a reason why. And so this really does speak to kind of like personality traits. This speaks to mm-hmm. us kind of dealing with who we are and not, not trying to say that you have to be an extrovert or an intro, you know, there, you know, I'm not saying that any oh, yeah. of that's requirement, yeah. but it's just, you know, how, how we act and how we, how we deal with experiences that have happened to us. How, how do we, how do we respond and do we, do we learn and grow from it or do we let it take us? Uh, into dark places you know um it's like with batman you know the loss of his parents and as a young boy do we take do we take that pain and that that anger and all the emotions wrapped into that and make something good out of it you know and and Man, work. Excellent. Uh, peter parker you know all the superheroes we've talked about and uh just analyzed you know it, it's, mm-hmm. it's the same concept here how how are we taking the experiences? How are we letting those shape us? Is it can it can it can we take the bad experiences and shape them for the good, or are we taking you know are they making us even worse? I don't know. It's it's up to us. It's 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 the choices that we make. So um, it's the choices I, yeah. that we make that make us who we are, and we can always choose to do what's right. Yeah, S- Spider Man Three. There you go. There you go. My friend no, Harry I, told me that. <laughs> <laughs> or taught me that <laughs> <laughs> so good <laughs> but um no we've had uh we've had a blast being able to break this down we are so excited for the final episode moon uh, night moon night season one uh hopefully yeah. it gets a season two but you're right i think it's a limited series so we'll cross our fingers loki's getting a season two so i'm i don't did. know it, i it, did hear oscar isaac say something like he didn't he didn't want to sign the like forever. I don't know what he called it, but like, you know, if it's like you come into Marvel, yeah. if you come into the world then you're kind of stuck in it until you right. die or something like, <laughs> so I think, I think that's when I think, I think that's why he's like, let's just see how this goes, <laughs> which I mean, and then, man, yeah. After the reaction, I'm man. sure he's going to be signing another contract. So let's, let's get that going. Um, but yeah, man. So, uh, Tucker, you want to give us uh, because uh, we have a couple things. Uh, I know that you've been working on day and night, day and night, day and uh, night <laughs> uh, for uh, the channel for our podcast. Uh, I know you had some exciting new developments that we've been trying to market to our listeners and viewers. But how about you, how about you tell us some of that stuff about? Yeah, man. Um, well, first of all, dude, Christian Franklin does an exceptional job, job, job doing that's like Steven job <laughs> doing the reels. Um, and like, I mean, the reels he posts are hilarious and they're just getting a ton of views and it's crazy. Like we were talking like, you know, all glory to God, like with our like <laughs> super small Instagram account, and YouTube account. I mean, we've been able to reach over like 50,000 views plus wow. growing in, but you know, we, we are selling superhero faith-based t-shirts. We will have a moon night one eventually come the next probably a month. And we have some cool ideas for that. We're definitely always definitely ordering more. one. Yep. yep. Oh yeah. We'll definitely have one. But one thing that we did want to, what you've probably heard it throughout this episode, but we are on Patreon. It is a way to support, 
creators. And, you know, if you, if you choose not to, Hey, keep on traveling the multi roles with us. You're just as cool. Um, but if you wanted to, it, you know, as low as $1 a month, you're able to contribute to the work we do. The, and, and if you do, then there's some special rewards. Uh, we will give you a personal shout out in every single video. You'll get your name in the description. And as the tiers go on Patreon, it goes up to, what was the other ones, Christians? I'm trying to think. I know you get a special edition poster. There's I think if you more. don't, uh, I think if you give about a thousand or <laughs> two thousand, I think you get like a plaque. You get some uh, a personal you get a hot, handshake. You get, a, you get a Tucker Walls hot toy, like a really uh, d- detailed Tucker. Uh, I've been flexing a muscle coming out of a portal. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that's um, where it's, it's in the I, fantasy I world. I, you know, it's sad. I Ooh, can't remember. I, I know it's it was the private like a, Facebook group where we're going to talk all things spoilers. Yeah, yeah and so it, it goes like a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, maybe. 10, I think one, five, ten, twenty. You made and it, so I'm just gonna I'm just, I think it's one yeah. five ten and twenty and it's okay. And and we're definitely gonna add more like more uh rewards to it. We were just right. trying to kind of get it up and going. A lot of this stuff will like feed into advertisement, different things, but you know, if yeah. it's out there, if you wanna if you'd like to help support grow this platform with us, uh, we'd be incredibly grateful. And but if not, hey, we're just as grateful because you rock and we're so excited to travel this, you know, this multiverse. Christian, we actually, you know, we joked about this. Someone actually said these dudes actually believe there's a multiverse. <laughs> and it was funny because well, it was duh, uh, yeah. <laughs> in, in, a, yeah. in a comic book sense, we believe there's a multiverse in a real out reality sense. It's it's it's, you know, it's fiction right. because but we, we we do play off those words of like of faith. Like there's many different faiths out there. And so we're kind of playing with that. So, um, and we're traveling, we're using scripture as our God and we're having some fun talking about superheroes relating it to the Bible. And Christian, I think that's about all I got my brother, man. Love it. But yeah, um, you guys heard the man, you heard him talk. So, uh, we don't get your money. We ain't making more content. So, uh, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> always got to ruin it. I always got to ruin it with humor. Um, Humor's uh, de- decrease in our uh, stocks. No, uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, it, it, we, we're, we're, we're so blessed and fortunate to be able to do this, um, as much as we can. And, uh, we're definitely going to be pumping out some more content. We got some exciting content coming out. Uh, yeah. After we've got this one, we've got Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. It's going to get mad, y'all. It's going to get crazy. Super I don't mad. know if y'all seen the TV spots, all that. We're, we're staying up to date with the trends, and it's going to get nuts, man. It's oh, like yeah. Michael Keaton. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Keaton, Batman. But um, no, we love you guys. Stay tuned for some more awesome content from Ducker and uh yeah, we're just we're so blessed to be able to do this. But until next time, Ducker, um, there's two words specifically for Moon Knight Ooh. that uh, you'd like to kind of coin since episode one. What are you going to leave the viewers with this time? Well, as we travel on with this into the multiverse, we're going to see you. Uh, <laughs> Welcome back to your universe. Thank you for tuning into today's special episode. Until next time, travelers.